State of mind. White knights perpetuate violence. Disclaimer. Discussion and depiction of domestic and sexual violence. If you are not in the headspace to engage with this topic, that is okay. Feel free to skip this video. Enter the game State of Mind, a sci-fi mystery starring Richard Nolan, a tough and crude journalist trying to find his missing wife and kid, getting wrapped up in a plot of a crazed futurist trying to unwittingly put copies of people into a utopian version of The Matrix without their consent. Richard Nolan, at first, seems like a rude, no-nonsense kind of guy trying to get his family back, but when the game switches perspectives to Tracy, Nolan's wife, and Lydia, Nolan's fan-turned-side chick, we realize that Richard isn't such a nice guy. He's a nice guy TM. He's a white knight. Gender studies and social legal protections for the rights of women and every queer person is more important now than ever, as rates of violent crime against women and queer people continue to rise and decades-long protected affirmative care and reproductive care are criminalized across the United States. These issues are related because they are part of a push by conservative politicians to use the power of the states to to enforce a heteronormative Puritan morality onto people for simply being different. It is the creation of big government power for the sake of rigid conformity, at the expense of individual liberty. Thus, it is more important now than ever to confront conversations about sexual and domestic violence, and the social motivations that lead people to commit or even be proud of these truly immoral acts. Hashtag Manosphere social media influencers pick up artists and others with so-called traditional values, have no qualms discussing the masculine role in romantic relationships in terms of force, dominance, deceit, and violence, all under a pseudo-biological ethics of how males and females act and are supposed to act. Whereas discussing the problems of these harmful masculine stereotypes comes with the risk of hurting or traumatizing, re-traumatizing the very people we seek to support by changing the conversation. It stands to reason that presenting these issues in media would be important in order to counteract the constant noise of fetishizing violence, yet doing so in a way that does not voyeurize nor fetishize seems prohibitively difficult in our culture, where film language and shot composition was developed with the male gaze as a norm. We are going to discuss a scene that depicts sexual violence without this sort of film language, however it is by no means easier to watch. Richard Nolan is someone who is only attracted to women who are hurting, desperate, and experiencing trauma. Richard believes that if he saves women from their problems, then he is owed romantic love and sexual gratification as a reward. He meets his wife Tracy when she is drug addicted and desperately searching for a lost, keys a lost keepsake in a dumpster. When Tracy has a successful career that allows them both to live in an upscale condo with their son, Richard and Tracy begin having marital troubles. Richard begins dating Lydia on the side. When we switch to Lydia's perspective, she is homeless, searching for food in a dumpster, sick and coughing. But a kind stranger takes her in, gives her food, medicine, a place to stay, and shows Lydia how to earn money online with her own line of work, cybersex. Basically phone sex, but with the hologram phones that have been established throughout the game. Lydia is feeling pressure to finish paying her half of the rent this month. The first client just wants someone to talk to after a co-worker died, paid $100. The second client offers to pay $300, that's enough to make rent. This client, however, with each request, becomes increasingly aggressive, demanding that Lydia use a hologram to look like a doll to stop moving to stop breathing. 
Lydia's hologram body is robotic and neuter. The camera darts rapidly, showing the client's body, pantomiming a smothering position. Close-up shots focus exclusively on the client's face obscured and Lydia's face in full view. At any time, the player has the option to end the call, but what about getting paid? We just saw our character homeless and sick a few minutes ago. I hung up before seeing any more of the scenes. It was most assuredly not a scene depicted for sexual gratification. The game already had strip club scenes and other such attempts. No, this was scary and uncomfortable. The client still pays the $300, and we get to decide to accept the client again in the future or block the client on the service. As soon as the scene is over, we get a call from Richard. Our roommate introduced us. We've been dating for a few weeks. He offers to start paying our rent so that we don't have to do cyber sex anymore. We don't tell him about what just happened. We can either accept or refuse the money. Either way, Richard invites himself over for a romantic evening with us. He just did something nice for us, so we owe him, right? Yet, when he comes over, he has us hide in our own bathroom so that we aren't heard while he calls his wife, ending the call with, I love you, then angrily berating Lydia for not wanting to hear him say that. Because, if you question Richard, you aren't treating him like a hero. He responds with anger and verbal abuse. You owe him, so you don't get to question him. Sure, he calms down after that, and you have a conversation, but only on Richard's terms. When the conversation becomes about his struggles, he's not emotionally available to either Tracy nor Lydia, so why would Lydia even try to tell him about the phone call? She doesn't. So what kind of man is the main character, really? Is he a nice guy? Or is this just a pattern of preying on the vulnerable? Is Richard a hero, saving women from the unfair struggles of life? Or is he just the John on the phone with a power fantasy to control what Lydia can and can't do? Paying for dominance, with more steps in between, and turning to violence when he doesn't have his way. He cannot love another person as an equal. He cannot empathize without compensation. Richard is that man who internalized the expectation placed on men by other men to pantomime dominance and violence in order to qualify as a man and to perform dominance and violence when the pantomime fails you. You, listener of this video, are you Richard? Or are you redefining your masculinity to stand as a self-actualized person who rose above the power fantasy and puts an end to the cycle of romanticizing violence? Stay true.